a brilliant theoretical physicist, cosmologist, and writer, and quite possibly the most famous scientist living today. While Stephen's scientific achievements have been thoroughly documented, there is a facet of this great man that remains unexplored and unknown to the public at large. Indeed, outside of a ferociously loyal cadre of fans, very few people are even aware of Professor Hawking's foray into the world of rap music, or of his hip-hop alter ego, MC Hawking. This documentary hopes to redress that situation by shining a light on the spectacular hip-hop career of this remarkable man. A career that, as we shall see, was cut short by a tragic event. Stephen Hawking's journey into the world of hip-hop began on a quiet June evening in 1998 at the University of Cambridge. While heading home after a late lecture, Stephen passed by Clare Hall, where the legendary hip-hop band The Beastie Boys were in the heat of a spirited performance. The sounds that Stephen heard emanating from that hall would change his life forever. When I entered Clare Hall that night, it was like a revelation. I had never heard anything like it before. The pounding complex rhythms, the intricate rhymes, the energy. I knew I had to be part of it. At that moment, MC Hawking was born. Stephen attacked his new passion with the same fervor and enthusiasm that he had once reserved for his scientific work. However, the single-minded dedication Stephen was showing to his new passion had a significantly detrimental effect on his scientific endeavors, and inevitably, his colleagues began to notice. Stephen and I had been working on a paper about the density matrix of the universe. The paper was coming together nicely and we were getting very close to publication when Stephen suddenly just stopped collaborating with me. After several filed attempts, I was finally able to get Stephen on the phone. When I asked him about the status of the paper, he told me, step off, I'm working on my flow and I ain't got time for your egghead bullshit. In December of 1998, Stephen entered a small recording studio and recorded a three-song demo. However, he was unable to find a record label interested in signing a nerdy, white, gangster rapping scientist. Refusing to allow this setback to derail his dream, Stephen decided to distribute the demo himself. In 2000, he released The Hawkman Cometh, a now classic three-song EP that first introduced the world to the pounding rhythms and labyrinthine flow of MC Hawking. Consider this a warning, your first and last, I hit the scene, it's like a bomb blast, I am become dead, the destroyer of worlds, G, the Hawkman comes and I'm bringing hell with me. The breakout track of the EP, however, was the soon-to-be iconic anti-creation science anthem, F the creationists. The damn creationists is those bunch of Every time I think of them, my greater finger itches. They want to have their vote talk in public class. Stephen J. Gould should put his foot right up there. The EP was both a critical and a commercial success, selling over 50,000 copies in one year. Impressive sales figures for an album with no label support. Now, the record companies were paying attention. In early 2001, Stephen signed with Brash Records to produce his first full-length studio album. One year later, the Big Bizang was released. The recording covered topics ranging from traditional rap themes to tracks inspired by scientific subjects. The album was also the first indication of Stephen's now well-known rivalry with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I remember a conference I attended with Stephen that included a delegation from MIT. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I noticed that when they took the stage to give their presentation, Stephen quietly left the auditorium. Later, as we were leaving, we discovered that the tires on their van were all slashed, and someone had spray-painted, Suck it, losers, on the side. Could never prove it was Steven, but... Like the EP, the new album was a critical success. Record sales, however, while good, did not meet Steven's ambitious expectations. After a year of touring to support the Big Bizang, Steven returned to the studio in 2003 to begin work on his second full-length album. Released in 2004, E equals MC Hawking was a startling achievement of fat beats, dope rhymes, and scientific theory. The album includes the now classic track Entropy, a song that would go on to find a home in dance clubs and science classrooms alike. Entropy, how can I explain it? I'll take it frame by frame it, but have you all jump and shove and saying it. Let's just say that it's a measure of disorder in a system that is closed. 
like with the border. It's sort of like a well measurement of randomness proposed in 1850 by a German, but where I digress, what the is entropy? I hear the people still exclaiming. It seems I could start the explaining. E equals MC Hawking was well received by critics and outsold both of his previous releases combined. I remember when E equals MC Hawking first came out, it was a revelation. I'd never heard anything like it. Everybody has a favorite song on that album, but for me, it will always be about the opening track, a brief dissertation on gravitational entropy, quantum cosmology, and the anthropic principle. I love that song. Hard to tense to, though. Stephen was on his way to stardom, and it looked as though his rise to success was an unstoppable force. However, unbeknownst to Stephen, the immovable object of tragedy lay just on the horizon. While preparing for his second world tour to support the new album, catastrophe struck. Stephen had a scientific breakthrough. I was working on my rhymes for a dope new track when all of a sudden it hit me out of nowhere. A potential solution to the information paradox problem. I tried to push it out of my mind, but it wouldn't go away. I couldn't concentrate on my flow. No matter how hard I tried, my brain kept pulling me back to this science bullshit. I finally realized I had to follow this idea through to its conclusion. Even if it meant putting my beats on hold. And put his beats on hold, he did. For the past 12 years, Stephen has focused his time and efforts on his scientific pursuits, and his rap career has stagnated accordingly. And so, the once promising career of one of hip-hop's most unique, controversial, and cerebral practitioners had come to a sudden and tragic end. But it turns out that MC Hawking cannot so easily be dismissed. He has recently announced that he has begun work on his first new album in over a decade. The album, entitled The Hawkman Returneth, promises to re-establish MC Hawking as a force to be reckoned with in the world of hip-hop. With the publication of Soft Hairs on Black Holes, I was finally able to get this bullshit science mumbo jumbo out of my head and return to my true passion. Hardcore gangsta astrophysics. Ah, yeah, get ready, biz niches. The Hawkman returneth. And I'm bringing some dope rhymes with me.